Yes, hello, and welcome to another vlog. So, uh, I've been meaning to make another one for a while. I've got a few things finished, but at the moment I'm sort of halfway through a lot of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few things I've finished. And then afterwards, if I think I've got time, I will show you a few things I'm halfway through or near completing. So, let's start with the thing I finished shortly after the last video. It's Trevor the Arcane, fully painted now. He, is, of course, has been uh, painted up in a colour scheme to match this character. It's magical Trevor. Yeah, quite pleased with this. Um, his leathery, leathery whip came out quite well. That's uh, two bits of uh, packing wire twisted together. Um... The rest is mostly, apart from the star on his hat, a stock model from Rapatha Europe, which I mentioned in the last video is uh, Gundolf the Grim. I will put a link to Rapatha Europe in the description below. Um, not really sure what else to say about this figure. Quite pleased how it's come out, and I'm glad it is in focus. Is it in focus? It looks in focus. Right, what else we got? A few videos back, quite a few videos back now actually, you may remember me saying They are exactly like tiny pumpkins. It's amazing. How did I not know these things existed? Well, I've got around to actually painting and basic or basing and painting a few of them here we go here are some tiny pumpkins look at that he's so nice just uh, made sort of various little, uh, piles of them a couple stuck on each base as an individual one and yeah, these should be pretty good in any sort of market square or farm kind of setting. I uh, just want to recreate something like the farm from the beginning of Overlord. I hear the pumpkins whispering at night. Or uh, various farms you see around uh, Fable. I think they're pumpkins in Fable. Uh, yeah. Rather pleased with these. Uh, they, they paint up well. Used uh, vomit brown and then the fiery orange and then the hobgoblin orange. Those of you taking notes of which paints I use, um, I think none of those paints are available any longer. So, huh, what are you going to do? Yeah, quite pleased with these. Um, so those are the intact ones. Let's put them back there and confuse autofocus probably. And I did so a few of the seed pods were broken open. Uh, so I made them into sort of rotting, decaying, and broken ones. Some of them were like kind of shriveled as well. So um, went with that. This is a piece where someone has been smashing pumpkins into putrid piles of debris. They're screaming! The pumpkins are screaming! And looks quite nice put uh, brown on the stems rather than green to make them look older and it's got like it's uh, seeds slash guts it's just seeds it's not guts uh, sort of spilling out of that big one in the middle there that's uh, that's just modeling sand there covered with super glue and painted an appropriate color that was clumsy yeah rather pleased with that that's that's one like that and I did uh, another like that as well Nice to sort of having, uh, nice to sort of have rotting ones I can scatter around when I need to. Uh, oh, just so you can see, there's a, there's Trevor for scale there, and some rotting pumpkins. So yeah, they're two variant pieces I made, and finally, 
for the pumpkins I did this piece which is on a square base uh, you may be wondering why this is and the reason has to do with you see many many videos ago probably not even in focus my hay cart scratch built one so rather than having hay in the back there I can have pumpkins just like that this uh, yeah, just adds a bit of variety in and uh, may indicate what season of the year it is depending on whether it is hay season or pumpkin season I'm sure they are a thing in farming no farmers correct me please okay actually if you do know there are different seasons for pumpkins and hay and stuff do tell me in the comments because you know audience engagement is good right so that is all the little bits I've got finished and now here are a few things I haven't finished yet this is some bunting uh, there's another piece and another piece on a slightly different base size so yeah wanted to sort of do a village fate thing at some point and I thought you know what bunting that's a thing so yeah these are made of the old Citadel regiment bases various sizes some sticks uh, some string and some paper not that hard really used a bit of filler on the base there all this will look a lot more distinct once they're painted these have uh, just been browned uh, more color will go on later not much to say about these really uh, they should look good when they're finished I'll probably talk more about them when they are finished let's get them out of the way and have a look at something else I've been doing a lot of stuff with wood recently this is going to be a merchant's wagon belonging to an NPC in my campaign but I've made it in such a way that it could belong to other NPCs if needed I've made these signs that go on the top here a magnetic so they can be removed and replaced with other signs to make it look like it belongs to someone else should the need arise but the first set of signs uh, will have on it Hans von Joik, the Viscount of Discount! Who is a recurring NPC, and I've also started work on a model of him as well, which I'll show you after I've shown you this. Yeah, this is a block of wood with wood stuck to it to make it look like a cart. Um, I don't really give very detailed descriptions of things. Maybe I should. Uh, show some work in progress shots so you can see how the sort of things goes together but I don't think I took any actually I may have taken a few I'm gonna put them in here if I can find them these wheels are the same ones you just saw in the previous cart and I scratch build these there is a photograph and text based tutorial and an ambulance going past that you may or may not have heard there is a text and photo based tutorial on how to put these together on an old forum I used to run but uh, I may get round to doing a proper tutorial video of how to do these at some point so if you'd like to see that, show me some interest and um, I will show you some content. Maybe that should be my um, channel slogan. Right, yeah, these, these wheels go on the axle, obviously. Let's see if we can do this without breaking anything, because I'm very clumsy when I'm trying to look through the camera at things. There we go that goes like that and then these signs magnetic themselves on the top here that will all look a lot nicer when it's painted up but uh, for now yep quite pleased with it 
and here's the man himself browned but otherwise not painted uh, so this guy is made from various pieces from various companies let's see what I can remember so the body is a Perry Miniatures War of the Roses uh, mercenary I think the arms are from a Citadel Empire soldier the head is from a uh, Citadel Marksman, I think, possibly. Some kind of Warhammer troop with um, that sort of look to it. The dagger is from that... Well, is it a short sword or a dagger? I'm not sure. I'm going to go with short sword, actually, now I said dagger and um, look, made myself look stupid. Right, that's, that's from the same set as the head. Um, what other bits did I use? No, I, I, that's all the bits I can remember for now. Yeah. So because he's an NPC, I have tried to put him in a uh, a neutral, a non-combat type pose. So he's just he's sort of got his sword at his side there, and he's grasping it, but he's not attacking or anything. So this is a good pose for him to be sort of stood next to his his wagon, waiting to trade something with passers-by. See, I do hear he is a merchant, right? So hopefully I'll get him painted today or tomorrow. And here's another NPC. This is Todrick Dine, a former sort of junior city guard that the PCs managed to persuade into becoming their henchmen. Uh, at the end of last game, so I'm putting a model together for him because no, no doubt they're going to shove him into a dungeon first and let me eat him. So that'll be worth all my effort of uh, converting and painting. He's made from a similar mix of parts actually. We've got uh, Perry War of the Roses uh, body there, uh, arms from the same set, head from. Uh, possibly from no, possibly most of that is War of the Roses. Actually, come to think of it, uh, backpack is from a Napoleonic soldier set. Running out of backpacks and uh, went over some sprues I'm never really going to use for anything else. And the shield is from EM4 miniatures. Yeah, that's that's all the parts I can remember from that one. So yep, yeah, those hopefully I will get painted, well I'll get finished painting them today or tomorrow. Do I have anything else to show you? Let's see. In a similar state of, uh, I've only just started painting it, barely, is this tree. A toy tree as the sort of, uh, well the sort of, the trunk of it. And the branches are old Citadel Woodland set. It's the old one now. There's a new Citadel Woodland set. Yeah, this exists now. Yeah. Uh, it's all blended together. Green stuff. Um, based up. Uh, did a bit of sculpting to join the branch together. You've probably seen this one in the, a video quite a long time ago. Well, I've uh, finally started painting it recently. And there's also this tree. Which I'm rather pleased with. This one I specifically remodelled in such a way to resemble this tree from Doom. As you can see, it looks quite a bit like it, I think. Uh, well, at least you can see the inspiration, probably, I hope. Yeah, this is a converted Citadel woodland tree, uh, added branch to make that sticky out root bit, um, remodelled all that by cutting and splicing bits back together, filler on the base, little skull, nice old Citadel skeleton skull there. And yeah, that's about it for now. 
If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and if you're subscribed to my channel, like this video. I need a goodbye catchphrase.